It has been over 14 months since I have had a sip of alcohol, since I have been drunk, and recently I've learned a whole nother part of me. I started seeing a new counselor, and I started reading this new book, and let me tell you, codependency is a huge, huge deal. And when I was reading this book, the biggest thing that came to my mind when she asked, do you have a problem picking out a bottle of bleach, one that's $1.67 or the one that's $1.53? And you have to overthink it. You might be codependent. <laughs> it literally was so eye-opening for me that I realized because she said these little decisions if you can't make these little decisions then you definitely cannot make the big decisions as in letting go of something that you were so dependent on like alcohol it is quite sad how dependent we can get on a substance. Drugs, alcohol, food, gambling, sex, shopping, any of it. So what I learned through this is you really have to realize what you want for yourself. One of the things that really also stood out to me is you have to take should out of your dang vocabulary. How many of us say I should quit drinking? Oh, I should do better at this. I should start eating better. I should not go out to eat all the time. I maybe shouldn't buy coffees every single day. <laughs> I mean, how many of us say, uh, I probably shouldn't go to the casino. I shouldn't go to the bar. I shouldn't go to happy hour. I should you know, just go to the grocery store. I should just drink water and not whiskey. I should try to lose 10 pounds. I should walk more. I should probably eat more protein. I mean, all the shoulds. And the identifier is, these are goals, but you have to take the should out of it. You have to work on it one day at a time. You cannot force it. As much as we want to lose that 10 pounds, as much as we want to quit drinking, as much as we want something to be better in our life, we have to dial in these goals. Maybe they won't happen overnight. Maybe it's gonna take a couple years, but you have to trust the timing. You have to trust the process. You have to do the work. You can't just magically write down a goal and wake up and this scale is 10 pounds lighter or the whiskey bottle is out of your house. It doesn't happen. It does not happen like that. Things take time. And yes, my 14 months of being sober and the things that I've learned along the way the people that look at you differently and all those times that I said I should not drink as much I should quit drinking I should eat better guess what I did it I probably said should a billion times before I actually did it my goal started with 75 hard it was 75 days to complete a healthier lifestyle and change my mindset, quit drinking, eat better, lose some weight. That was a goal. It was 75 days of goals. Every single day I had to complete a list of five things. Was it easy? No. Did I dread a lot of days? Yeah. Am I on round two now? Yeah. 
because I know how good it was for my life. And I know that it's better for me mentally and physically. And there's, I texted my friend the other day and I said, gosh, there are days that I literally dread doing this. I don't want to do it. But what is the point of giving up? What is the point of failing? So yeah, I should complete my task list because it's better for me and I'm doing it. That is my goal. So I'm taking my shoulds and making them goals. Do I have a big weight loss goal for this round? No. What is my goal after this, during this round? Honestly, I want such a strong mindset that I can overcome a lot of things. I still struggle, trust me. I still look at some of my friends and wonder why things had to change and wonder if people look at me differently because, well now it's, do they look at me differently because I have a sober channel and they never drink so they're gonna judge me or do people judge me because I was a drinker and now I don't drink so they don't like me anymore. The other thing that goes hand in hand with health is when you start losing weight and putting goals together and accomplishing them, people kind of get weird with you. It's like they want you to take their hand and make them do it with you, but you can't make anybody do anything. As much as I want to make people quit drinking get better jobs, lose weight, move their body, eat healthier. I can't force anybody to do that. You have to do it on your own. But they're the ones that have to be miserable. I don't have to be miserable. They're the ones that have to keep doing that. I should quit, I should quit this, I should quit that, I should quit smoking, I should quit spending too much money. I. Should I should quit, you know, I don't need to drink every single day. I probably should not eat that donut. I should probably eat an egg. I don't know, anything. All the distance that I've, I don't know if I've created it, but maybe I have, I could be guilty. But guess what, I'm living my life for me and what I've learned, th another thing that I've learned through the last 14 months is you have to do what's best for you. If that means you're going to go on more walks without a friend, that's fine. If it means you're going to stay home one weekend and not partake in festivities, that's also okay. And you also have to be okay with leveling up the biggest thing you have to surround yourself with like-minded people people that want to see you succeed people that want to help you people that are your cheerleaders not people that get freaking intimidated because you're doing good in life gosh like screw those people like they don't have a place in your life if they cannot support you and be by your side and root for you. It's not, it's not cool. That's all I have to say. I mean, I have bystanders and then I have people reach out to me and say how proud they are of me. People that I would have never expected. And then I have people that you would expect to say stuff to you in a positive way and yet they just look at you like you're in they're you intimidate them because you're on a different journey than them everybody changes and for 14 months it has been a roller coaster of finding out where i fit in who i belong with as in like inner circles and outer circles and that whole spiel but 
it's hard. It can get lonely. The days that I have contact with girlfriends are some of the best dates. But not everybody wants to be your ride or die. A lot of people actually just want to walk away from you because, well, they don't like the fact that you are finding people that inspire you to be better. They take that as a, well, she doesn't want to be friends with me. I'll look at her new best friend. Oh my gosh. It's petty. It's pure jealousy. And it's like, if you want, if you see somebody and they are succeed, like doing better for themselves and this person probably never would have, as in me, I would have never thought that I was here trying to reach so many people and tell my story about quitting drinking and getting people to actually quit drinking. But you know what? People can't respect that fact. They still have to be weird with you and still take it as an attack on them. But it's not. It's if you are at that phase of quitting drinking, I know that I have talked to some, I talked to uh, Keith a lot and we are in the same situation. It's like, it's so funny, like friends and family that we used to hang out with and then for him, like ex coworkers and people that are were in his outer working circle, everybody just starts judging you in a different light. And you just have to say, screw you, I'm gonna do what's best for me and I'm gonna move on with my life and be, keep being better and keep 10xing my life. Am I a millionaire? Hell no. Am I making money doing this? Nope. Is it rewarding helping people quit drinking? Yes. Is it a spiral effect? For sure. Me helping one person quit reached another person, which reached another person, which then became a, a huge like campaign for something. So I'm just saying, don't let people bring you down. Just keep walking your walk and there's no going back for me. The things that I have felt, the people that I thought were there for me, the roller coasters of ups and downs, all the things that I've learned the last 14 months. I am glad that I have been able to go through this life. Like, it, I'm glad that I have been able to experience all these things the last 14 months because, I mean, I don't sugarcoat it. There's days where I'll come home and talk to my husband about something and we just are baffled <laughs> by things. But you can't let people and you can't let things get you down. If you have a bad day, journal it. If you're having a weak moment, go for a walk. Call a friend, text a friend, listen to an audio book that's uplifting, read a positive book, eat something healthy. I don't know. You gotta do what's best for you. Those goals need to be goals and not shoulds. Those feelings that you were going to encounter, it's okay, it's one day at a time. And I mean, just watching the squirrels. <laughs> they just like to plant their seeds wherever and grow toxic things for other people. Don't be that person. Take the toxic out of your life. Put a goal list together, not a should list. Yeah, we all should do things, but the shoulds aren't going to turn into anything achievable unless you actually set a goal list and not get defeated about it. Don't force it. Take one day at a time and trust the process. I promise you, if you can do that in 14 months, you'll have a whole different story. I 
can only guarantee as much work as you actually want to put in. But from my standpoint, I can promise you that if you do the work, you will be in a lot better place than you are today if you are struggling. Hit the subscribe button to help me, help you, help many others. And please comment below what things you want to take, what shoulds you want to take and make a goal. What are you struggling with? 